Okay, hi everyone. My name is Snaker Rajasekaran, and I am part of the Tempest Debate Free Resource Committee. So today we'll be going over Lincoln Douglas format and essentially like an intro to Lincoln Douglas and what it is. Okay, so Lincoln Douglas, also abbreviated as LD, is a style of debate named for debates about slavery and its philosophy between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen A. Douglas in 1858. Um, it'll be really fun and rewarding and Mr. Lincoln would be impressed at the undertaking you're embarking on. All right, so what is LD? LD is essentially a one-on-one -on -one style of debate, so it's where one person will be deba debating AF or the affirmative and the other one will be the negative or the neg. You'll have a neutral judge and there will be an emphasis on philosophy, so as discussed in the previous slide. Uh, topics, essentially the AF will support the resolution or the topic, whereas the NEG will negate it. And the new topic is announced bi-monthly by the National Speech and Debate Association or the NSDA. So this website will take you to that and you can see all of the topics. So there is just an example from the 2020 National Tournament topic and uh, our camp topic. So format for LD debate. Um, so the affirmative constructive speech, that will be the first thing that happens, and then after that will be a cross-examination of F by NEG, where essentially it's just the NEG asking questions to the F. Uh, then the NEG will have a constructive and a rebuttal speech, then cross-examination of NEG by the F, then the affirmative has a rebuttal, NEG has a rebuttal, and affirmative closes off with another rebuttal. So when we say constructive speech, we essentially mean where you're presenting your initial arguments, whereas your rebuttal speech is focused more on counterattacking your opponent's arguments. So here are abbreviations. So you see here, like for affirmative constructive speech, instead of writing that out on your flow, you'll just write like AC uh, for negative rebuttal. You'll write 2NR, 2AR for affirmative rebuttal and such. So speech times, essentially each side gets 16 minutes in total. Um, so the AF constructive will start first with six minutes and then the NEG will ask the AF questions that last for three minutes. Then the NEG constructive and the rebuttal will last for seven minutes. NEG cross-examination for three. First AF rebuttal for four. Second NEG rebuttal for six minutes. And lastly, the second AF rebuttal for three minutes. So these are the speech times a little more in depth. So in your first uh, affirmative constructive speech, the AF will essentially present their initial arguments in a case, um, then the cross-examination, which lasts for three minutes, of AF by NEG. So it's where the NEG will ask questions about arguments in the case. Then the negative constructive and rebuttal speech will happen, where the NEG presents initial arguments in a case and rebuts the AF's arguments or case, or and case. And then cross-examination of NEG by AF, so here's the AF's turn to ask the NEG questions about the arguments in case. And then the affirmative rebuttal is where the AF defends their own case and rebuts the NEG defenses. And negative rebuttal is where NEG defends own case and rebuts AF's. Affirmative rebuttal again is the last speech and they close off where AF defends own case and rebuts NEGs. So the AF constructive or the AC is the first speech given in debate round. So six minutes time. It is the first speech in the entire round, and because of this, there will be no neg arguments yet established for the AF to attack. So essentially, the AC is completely used only to give the AF case. So in the AF case, it'll involve like an intro and definitions of the resolution uh, framework, which essentially is just philosophical backing of your case, and then contentions. So your goals in the AC are to establish framework, lay out contentions, and set the tone of the round for both your judge and your opponent. Next is the AF cross X, um, which lasts for three minutes. This is where the NEG gets to ask the AF questions about their case, and NEG is the only one that can ask questions, and AF is forced to answer during these three minutes. So during this time, the NEG's primary goal is to clarify the AF case, try and poke holes or attack the AF case, um, and the AF wants to defend their own case and avoid any uh, concessions or conceding to anything that the NEG asks. And the NEG essentially tries to set up questions for their next speech by establishing grounds or con conditions or attacking links or impacts or evidence like cards. So next will be the NEG constructive rebuttal. This is known as the 1NC or the 1NR. Um, so this lasts for seven minutes and it's where the NEG has a seven minute time, seven minutes to split between setting up their own case, which is a constructive, and attacking the AF, which is a rebuttal. 
So essentially this time is usually set up between three and four. So you'll, the neg will spend three minutes on their own case and then move on uh, to attack the AF case or give their rebuttal for four minutes. However, this can completely uh, depend on the round. So times may vary. Um, Essential goals for the NEG here are either agree on the framework or attack on the Fs and explain why the NEG's framework is better or should be valued in the round and additionally attack the Fs contentions. So show why you outweigh or why their contentions don't make sense or how you can delink them. The next is the NEG cross X. So the NEG cross X is three minutes. This is where the AF gets to ask the NEG questions about their case and rebuttal. And again, this is where the F can ask questions and Neg must answer. Um, so same things as we said for the F constructive or F cross X. Here the F wants to poke holes in the Neg case while the Neg wants to defend their own case. Uh, the first F rebuttal is four minutes, four minutes, and it is essentially an attack on the negative case. So in these four minutes, you are trying to attack their framework if it's different from yours. If it's not different from yours, then explain why uh, your contentions fall under your framework better or uphold your framework better. Um, additionally, you'll attack their contentions or outweigh. So say like, oh, we outweigh because there's a larger probability of this happening in the F world than it will in the neg world. Um, additionally, within those four minutes as well, you'll defend the AF case, so any arguments made by the NEG in their previous speech, in their one and R, um, you'll have to defend against. So you defend against your own framework as well as your contentions. Next is the second NEG rebuttal, or the two and R, and this lasts for six minutes. So essentially here, the NEG will address the framework debate and continue to attack the F framework uh, if it's different while defending your own and showing why it's better, and if frameworks are the same then just say it and move on don't spend a lot of time on that next you'll defend against af arguments brought against your case in the one ar so this was the previous rebuttal that the af just had that lasted for four minutes so the neg um will defend against these arguments as well as extend the attacks uh made on the previous in your previous rebuttal so in the one and r that lasted for seven minutes um Remember that you must reiterate or expand upon the attacks you previously brought on the F case in your one and R. So essentially like don't bring in new arguments. And if they did not respond, if the F uh, does not respond to your attacks on their case, then immediately point that out. Because remember that if your opponent drops or concedes an argument, it essentially becomes the most important point in your debate. It becomes the most important offense. So you'll want to point this out. And if they do defend, then you'll disprove their defense and be like, oh no, this is wrong because so-and-so or blah, blah, blah. Next, you'll summarize the key events in the debate. So these are generally what we call voters and voters are just as they sound. So it's essentially telling the judge why they should vote for you, right? So you'll spend a good bit of time on voters to essentially wrap everything up and tell the judge and be like, oh, hey, this is why you should vote for me and then list a couple of reasons. Remember that there can be no new attacks, defenses, or evidence in your two and R, so no bringing new arguments into your second rebuttal. This goes for both the F and the NIG rebuttals. So the second F rebuttal, this will be what closes off the round. This is a three minute speech, and this is where the F is defending the case against any attacks made by the NIG, uh, super important attacks that you think need to be addressed. And this is generally only if they would like decide the round. And then the AF will also extend your extend the attacks on the neg case. So don't get too carried away with this. Just briefly touch up on them and summarize like what your attacks were on that case. And then uh, with the remainder of your three minutes, you'll summarize the events of the round and what happened. So you'll give voters again. Voters are important because they allow you to like put the little cherry on top and tell the judge why they should vote for you. And additionally. You want to give a summary so this is the last speech of the round and you want to basically walk the judge through what happened and why you should win um in every debate round there will be prep time so each side gets four minutes of prep time and sometimes for national tournaments or on the national circuit it'll be five minutes but generally uh it will be four minutes of prep time for each side so the AF usually uses it before the one and one ar and the two a two ar so that's before both of their rebuttals 
um, essentially because they'll split the time two and two minutes or uh, two minutes, 30 seconds and one minute, 30 seconds, however you want to, however you feel is comfortable. But generally, we don't recommend spending more than three minutes on prep time uh, before the 1 AR because you know you might need it in your or before your later speeches and then as for the neg it's essentially used before the one and c and the two and r so these um four minutes of prep will depend on what you're running and how you're running it and what your strategies are um as a general rule in ld prep is not taken before cross-examination so like for instance the af will go and give their uh first speech which we call the AC, which is six minutes, and then the neg is uh, going to ask cross X questions for three minutes, so there won't be prep time taken between those uh, speech or between those. Just a general rule, and your goals for prep time you want to use your prep time to get something on the flow for all the offense in your opponent's case or speech. So this can include weighing if you don't have the direct block or any evidence, like carded evidence against this. Additionally, you want to put together a speech doc of cards that you'll be reading in the next speech just so you don't have to click through multiple tabs and get confused. Um, next, you'll decide what to collapse the round to, so what you want to focus on, what you want to tell the judge to focus on. And for the two NR and two AR, you're going to use your prep time to write down the key voting issues, so telling the judge why they should vote for you, right? So again, these are just suggestions. So for the AF, essentially it's used before the affirmative rebuttal uh, and the affirmative rebuttal here, so before both. And then for the NEG, it heavily depends on how much prep time you decide to use uh, per or before each speech, but it's used before the negative constructive and rebuttal speech in number three, and before the negative rebuttal in number six. And here, no matter what, your prep time should add up to four minutes. So how you divvy up your time is completely up to you. You can do two and two minutes, which is generally uh, what's most commonly run, one minute, 30 seconds, and two minute, 30 seconds, or two minutes, 13 seconds, and one minute, 47 seconds. Again, this just depends on how you wanna, uh, how you want to uh, use your time for prep time. So goals of a debate round, essentially the entire point of a debate round is to persuade the judge that remember, the judge is not gonna be biased. So you're gonna have a neutral judge and you wanna persuade the judge to vote for your side. So how do you do this? You wanna be able to read your judge and establish a strategy that your judge will be sympathetic to and understand. So this also comes in with um, judge adaptation and knowing what your judge likes and whatnot, but we have a video on that. So go check that out. Uh, but back to this. So yes, persuading the judge to vote for your side. You wanna um, get them to see why uh, your world is a better world. So either the F or the neg, whatever side you're on. Um, next, you want to make the decision clear. So, right, you want to essentially write it out, spell it out for the judge. Make them have to do as little work as possible and don't get stuck in the line by line. Don't waste your time going over every single argument. So, this is what we're calling collapsing collapse on the most important arguments and tell the judge these are the most important points in the round. And since I outweigh on them or um, address them while my opponent does not, you vote for me. And then Remember, a big part of debate is also to win respectfully, so you want to be respectful to um, your judges, your opponents, regardless of how they may seem, where they're from, uh, how their cases are, always be respectful. Speaker points essentially are how well you speak and how well the judge um, thinks you are composed or you hold yourself. Um, and then also, you'll have debate rooms where, they, where you'll debate new, newer debaters and it's just important to be respectful to anyone regardless of how long they've been doing the activity for. And then finally, we want you to learn. That is a definite goal of a debate round, right? So you wanna learn, that's what you're in there for, education. So research any new arguments that you've made or you've heard and also after each case your or each round your judge, um, We'll definitely give you feedback, so modify your case or strategy based off of that. See what works for you, see what doesn't. Just, you know, play around with it a little bit, and of course, have fun. That's one of the most important things. Like, at the end of the day, debate is an activity, so just have fun and enjoy yourself. But, um, yes, so next is flowing. So this is an example of what a flow looks like. 
so for example, you'll see at the very top, you'll have definition. So here they have like illegal, forbidden by law, right? So that's definition. So you have definitions that your opponent reads in their case. Essentially, the redefinitions framework and then their plan text and whatnot. So after framework or after definitions will be framework. So here essentially, uh, it's helpful to write in shorthand. So make notes for yourself. So commonly like a capital V stands for value. A capital VC stands for value criterion. So like an M, a capital M would be morality, right? A capital J might stand for justice. So whatever works for you and you don't have to send like or waste all of your time writing something down while your opponent's already ahead saying um, other stuff on their case. And then next is plan text. So this is where your opponent's like uh, contentions and whatnot will start. So they'll have like plan text and then they'll you'll write down like a tagline and just once again briefly note down the tagline. Don't write don't write word for word. And then you you'll see contentions here. So the contentions they have like contention one. Uh, black markets and then underneath it they have an author and the, they'll usually circle or box the author name and the year that it's that the evidence has been is from and this is just helpful so you can refer back to these authors for example if you need to in cross x and be like oh hey what was your lister 17 card talking about could you summarize that for me and whatnot and then underneath the author uh, you will have the summary of a card. So you want to write down the essential point of what that card is saying or what that evidence says. And then you'll see here, so essentially when you flow, you want to flow with two different pens, right? One for the AF, this would be, uh, or one for the AF and one for the NEG. So one for your case and one for your opponents. Um, it just makes it easier. So for instance, like you've got um, your opponent's case all flow down or your, you've gotten a side all flow down here. And then you'll say, like, the ones in red will be your opponent's attacks, your arguments against uh, your own. And then you can make rebuttals and whatnot. So, like, arrows drawn mean, like, to extend the argument because your opponent did not make any um, arguments against this, so therefore they can see to it. But that's just an example of a flow. Everyone flows differently. Um, it's just helpful to follow this kind of technique, and this is what's most commonly used. So how the winner is determined. So each debater presents a philosophy at the beginning of the case. The philosophy is how the debater tells the, round, tells the rounds judge to contextualize benefits. So essentially like uh, it could be lives saved or economic relief or whatnot. So like you could be like, judge, we save more lives. Therefore we have a larger impact and we outweigh, right? Um, next, the debater who proves to the judge that his or her case will lead to more benefits, so the proposed philosophy will win. So, for instance, lots of common uh, or a really common philosophy used for LD debate is utilitarianism, which is essentially just promoting the greater good for the greatest amount of people that we can. So, you can say, "Oh, um, my case solve or ends up saving more the lives of more people." For instance, a million people, while my opponents case only solves for the lives of 30 people. So we have larger impacts and therefore it's uh, more benefits. So we'll win, you know, that kind. Um, next is debating in the context of your opponent's philosophy is why LD is so much fun, right? So essentially arguing about the philosophy or agreeing and when you do agree then showing like why you uphold your philosophy better. Uh, yeah, guys, so that's it. That's an intro to debate. I know this is kind of over overwhelming. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team. Yeah, and thank you so much. Bye.